Welcome to the second Space Unity tutorial where I'm going to go through how it works uh, with the sphere approach and render as background and also the space elements that build up the entire scene such as the deep space, the stars, the nebulous galaxies, planets, etc. So uh, what I've got in front of me now is uh, I've imported the Space Scene Construction Kit, so in other words Space Unity, into uh, an empty scene. So I can do this just to make sure. New scene. There we go. And um, all we get is the traditional Unity main camera and nothing happens when we press play, which is fine. So uh, first what I want to do is I want to create the uh, atmosphere or the universe and uh, we go to Window Space Scene Construction Kit and I won't go through these settings yet. Uh, we'll just create a random sphere or a random scene. There we go. We can close that one now. So what it does is add the uh, uh, nebulous, the planet, and the space camera automatically there for you. So uh, you'll see that it's very blue down here and that's because uh, we have to do a few things uh, if we start with a brand new scene and that is uh, for the main camera, if we were to play now, it's gonna look a bit funny. Uh, well, actually we've got no movement so it doesn't look uh, much at all, but uh, we uh, we have the main camera and uh, by default uh, and the main camera has clear flags skybox which basically means that it clears everything apart from a skybox texture if one was set for this camera. And we don't really use skyboxes in this fashion, so the first thing we need to do for the main camera is to change from skybox clear flag to depth only. And that will then uh, leave whatever the space camera renders, which is really important for this to work. So. Uh, depth only clear flag set, uh, we get this one. Another thing we have to do is that it actually renders doubles now uh, because the main camera is rendering the same uh, scene here and we don't want it to render this twice as well. We only want this space camera to render that scene. So for the main camera, we also have to change the culling mask and take away the uh, deep space layer uh, because you see that the planet disappeared now and it's because it's out of view for the space camera but it was in view for the main camera. But um, just make sure that it's changed to depth only and that the culling mask, you redeem, remove the deep space layer there. Uh, still nothing will really happen if we press play because there's no movement uh, in the scene. So what we can do then is we can go into the demo assets folder uh, in the project view and go to prefabs and we'll drag our uh, demo spaceship in. And uh, if I press play now, you can control the spaceship, but uh, there's still no movement because uh, we need to also uh, have our main camera just rotate a little bit around here. So uh, we can also then, we can go to the, uh, in the demo folder, there's also a camera follow script that you can drag to your main camera. And uh, we want to change uh, the target here, you need to set to spaceship. So when I press play now, the camera will uh, follow my spaceship instead. and. As you can see, the uh, uh, the background is rotating properly with my um, as my main camera turns, and that is because uh, with the space scene camera, it's really important that uh, it has a parent camera, and for the space camera, there's a, a parent uh, camera parameter here, and it's set to none at the moment, and it's because if it's set to none, it'll default check if you've got a main camera and then apply that one. So if for some reason you've created a new camera and you removed your main camera. Uh, you have to ensure that uh, you link whatever camera you create to to this one, um, to this space scene camera, so it knows how to turn, because it doesn't know how to turn on its own. It needs to have some sort of a reference to which, which way it should render the background. Uh, so we've got that one sorted now. Uh, what we want to do then, we could also add uh, some, uh, some of the effects that we've got for uh, the camera effects and if we go into the spacing construction kit and prefabs there are some camera effects and we want to apply to your main camera uh, we don't want to apply it on the space camera because we need uh, that would render it in you know weird background sense but we want actually want the space fog and the particles to be flying past your spaceship rather than in far distance so we uh, we attach these to the space camera and we do the space fog and space particles we can do and if I press play now they should appear you've got the space particles flying past here uh, now you'll see that the space fog is blocking up in a strange way um, and that's another thing when it comes to space games or at least 
the one I have set up now, you're dealing with high velocities and you fly many meters per second. So you need uh, the view distance to be really far. And by default, the main camera only has a, a distance of a uh, thousand. So depending on the scale of your game and how fast your object is moving, you'll probably have to change the um, this clipping plane. And uh, I'll set it to 50,000 for now. So you can see the camera just reached out a lot further. And you see that it goes well beyond uh, this space sphere, but we have to remember that what goes on in your game and the space fair is two totally different scales because uh, whatever happens you're going to be stuck in the center of this uh, dome anyway for now you can move relatively in it later on but uh, at this stage basically you'll never move anywhere in the sphere regardless if you in unity fly way out outside of the boundaries here so uh, since i've changed the uh, clipping plane now we should have um, these particle fade in a little bit smoother so they don't just clip out of nowhere so there you go there we go. just fly around and have a little peek we can also add the uh, let's see now we can add we've got the object effects as well which we've got as asteroid fields we'll drag this one into if you just add it to the scene itself, uh, it's at position zero zero zero. Now, what will happen then is um, it'll create an asteroid field, which is a big sphere. It'll j randomly just lo uh, spawn these asteroids within this field. We can make this sphere a bit smaller. Uh, let's reduce it to uh, range two thousand, and we only want a hundred asteroids. Then press play you'll see that it creates a lot a much smaller sphere that you can fly through and uh when there's no parent to uh to this basically you you just added the uh, the asteroid field in the hierarchy base route so there's no parent then uh, this you can, you can fly fly straight out of this so you can place these uh, asteroids wherever you want them to be there we go so let's just fly out of range. As you can see, there are no new asteroids spawning. These are just created objects in your scene. Uh, if you want an endless asteroid field, uh, you can attach the asteroid field to your moving object, either a camera, but I suggest the spaceship itself. Um, and this doesn't mean that the asteroid will basically drag along after your ship, uh, but they will spawn instead. Uh, as you can see, they relocate and spawn new ones. And remove the ones that are out of sight here behind your ship and spawn new ones in front of your ship. And as, at the moment the, the sphere is so small so you see them plopping up which is not so nice. Uh, you wouldn't really have big asteroids plopping up like this. Um, even though they are fading which is a bit strange since you know you can see some stars through it but <laughs> um, it's still it's fading is slightly better than just throwing them right in, in there. So. What we're going to do is uh, we'll increase the size of this asteroid field again. We'll restore it to prefab, which is 20,000. And we can restore it back to 1,000 asteroids. And if I press play now, you won't really see it. But it, these asteroids now, uh, basically, you can just fly forever and you'll never run out of asteroids. These 1,000 asteroids will keep removing, fading away from the back here. And they will relocate to beyond viewing distance of your camera they'll just keep re relocating uh, so to you it'll appear, or to the player rather it'll appear like there's just an infinite amount of asteroids and these are interactable uh, the asteroids as well um, on the main camera if I change by default the, the follow mode is set to spectator which is a, a mode where it it uh, you fly behind the ship as a spectator and it creates quite scenic views as you can see, you slightly move towards the ship at all times. If I let go of the controls now, this chasing spectator will catch up with my ship to and, and rest at the distance that it's been configured here. And uh, that's not really good for in-game use. This is more for a demonstration purpose. So we can change follow mode to chase. And that will place us at distance of whatever we choose, 40 or 30. And at a specific height, let's say 6. And this is the minimum distance because we also have a damping effect. Uh, so it'll actually pull away a little bit because the damping effect will uh, drag you a little bit behind the camera. 
And these asteroids, uh, as I mentioned before, they're not uh, part of the background. These are fully interactable objects. So if I sh fire my guns here, you can actually blow these up as it is now. I don't really know how realistic it is that you blow up lasers or <laughs> asteroids with lasers, but uh, you can modify it to whatever suits your game. Let's see if I can get that one. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Uh, I have to find one more. Can't leave it like that. Here we go. You're next. There we go. Okay. Uh, press stop there. It'll I modified these settings in uh, camera, f sorry, during the play mode now, so it'll revert back to whatever I had before. So um, that's uh, just creating a brand new scene, and uh, yeah, should talk a little bit more about the asset, but I think I'll do that in my next tutorial instead. We'll just keep them short and sweet like this instead, I think. So uh, let's just leave it like that and have a look at the next tutorial if you're still interested.